returning back to an enchanted reality. And then you start to see the synchronicity ticker turn on. Another thing about raw living foods, superfoods, cleaning up your body, detoxifying your body, alkalizing your body, chlorophyll, rich, saturation, chocolate, is your synchronicity ticker starts going on, right? If highly creative people, artistic people, do they sleep like normal people? Let's think of a few. Uh, Bruce Lee, <laughs> Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, Rudolf Steiner, Edgar Cayce, Leonardo da Vinci. Those guys sleep like normal people. Do they have some kind of schedule like nine? Okay, we go to work from nine to five at the cathedral, <laughs> right? The Sistine Chapel. I'm going to paint the handprint of God up there from nine to five. But after that, okay, I'm going back home. I have dinner with the family. <laughs> And then I'm going to be asleep at a certain time and do it all together. No, like Thomas Edison's like up for three days, sleeps for, for two hours, and gets back on the, in the game. There is a dynamic here that when you do what you love and you find a way only to do what you love, you mitigate a lot of the conventional health guidelines. A lot of the nutritional rules become, become totally elusive. You don't, you don't, you're not subject to the same rules as everybody else. When all your work is play, you'll never work another day. <laughs> Working causes energy depletion. It causes fatigue. It causes depression and sorrow and disenchantment. Playing all day long causes everything that we essentially have been wanting. The things that we put all our focus on. The things that we're working so hard to achieve one day later on. To retire. I don't ever want to retire. I want to respire. Retire. Right? And just bury me now. Just go ahead. Just bury me if that's my idea. If I'm just I'm trying to get to the finish line so I could like lay on a yacht for the rest of my life. Maybe on a dialysis, dialysis machine. No, right? That's not what any of us want, right? We want the rest of our years, as many years as we're fortunate to get, to be full of love, laughter, joy, miracles, magic, and absurd, hilarious comedy. There was this idea in success literature, you got to fake it until you make it. Who's heard that? Fake it until you make it. What a weird idea now that I think back on it. It's like, I'm not trying to fake anything. Why don't you feel it until you reveal it? You can bypass that whole, that whole societal program right there. This idea of faking it is very prevalent in our culture. Our culture is heavily based on superficiality, on artificial, synthetic, fake, and phony cover up material. It's a cosmetic reality. Every way that products are being marketed to you from every end is prying on your insecurities. Every step of the way. Everything. 100% of commercials you watch on TV are picking at you. Every time you, wait, you, you open up a cosmetic magazine or a fitness magazine or a beauty magazine. Every time you read an advertisement, you read an article, somewhere woven in there, they're picking at your insecurities and they're, they're amplifying it. They're trying to put it in your face so you feel like you're not enough and you don't actually see how beautiful you really are, especially for women. They're preying on vanity. That's the superficiality of our world. It's the same thing, obviously, with the, the, the hospital side of things, the medicine side of things. Everything you can think of from every corner that we're being, all the messages coming at us is all based on that artificiality, right? It's like better living through chemistry. We were sold that idea way back when that actually we could chemically manipulate things 
for better living. Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, rodenticides, algicides, chemical fertilizer, MPK fertilizer, glyphosate, Roundup Ready, Monsanto Roundup Ready insecticide. Right? Antibiotics, factory farming, consolidating all these sick animals into little little package or little like confinement containers that could really reflect the Holocaust, basically. Right? That's where that all leads. When you think superficially, when you think artificially, and you you exchange your nobility and your true essence, your humanity over for convenience, guess what you're going to get in return? Remember last night? What was I talking about? Cacao's fall from grace. What was the theme of that? The Faustian bargain. If you guys haven't read that book or, or seen that story, you guys should pick that up. Johann von Goethe, Faust, the Faustian bargain. This, the alchemist, the writer, the artist, the entertainer, the musician who sells his soul to the devil for fame and fortune now only to be allocated or designated to the depths of hell for the rest of eternity. Trading his soul to the devil for convenience, fame and fortune, right?